A landmark report on climate change from the United Nations today says time is quickly running out to prevent the worst of climate change's future harms. The report is the world's most comprehensive assessment of the current state of climate change in nearly a decade. It says the countries need to slash carbon pollution and fossil fuel by two-thirds by 2035 in order to prevent disastrous and possibly irreversible consequences. The UN Secretary General also called for an end to new fossil fuel exploration projects and for rich countries to completely quit coal, oil and gas by 2040 in order to stay under the warming limit of 1.5 degrees Celsius. And joining me now to discuss is uh, Cassie Flynn. She is the strategic advisor on climate change for the United Nations Development Program. Cassie, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Very happy to be here. Can you please walk us through some of the findings and data specifically in this report? Why is this report so alarming? Mm -hmm. This report is really a landmark in our journey to addressing the climate crisis. Scientists are clear from around the world that we have to take action and we have to take it now. We are on the precipice of really locking in a future that is just quite frankly dangerous for everyone in the globe. Okay, now we believe the report says emissions in 2019 were 12% higher versus 2010. This despite the fact countries apparently have been working towards reducing emissions. Right. So something that is really important about this report is that we need to cap global temperature rise at 1.5 degrees. And the scientists are telling us that in order to do this, we have to take dramatic action now. There is really no time to lose. Procrastination is deadly because if we don't take this action, if we don't try to reduce our emissions by these uh, dramatic rates, then we're going to lock in a lot of these extremes that we're already seeing right now. So all of these wildfires, all of these droughts, these floods, these, these horrible headlines we see around the world will essentially be the baseline of our future. Um, it would be this or even worse as we get closer to this 1.5 degree threshold. And something that's really important about this is that scientists are telling us that, that we have to peak our emissions really within the next few years in order to reach this goal of, of staying below 1.5 degrees. We're at 1.1 degrees now, so it leaves us this very tiny little budget to be able to keep ourselves safe. So we're at 1.1 degrees Celsius now. What are we saying? How close are we from uh, reaching that threshold of uh, 1.5 degrees? So all of these, uh, these wildfires, these droughts, they are all the product of a set of choices that we have made. We have built our economies really on the backs of fossil fuels. Um, mm. The more emissions that we put into the atmosphere, the more pollution that we put into the atmosphere, the hotter it gets. And the hotter it gets means the more unstable we become. And so this means it affects our water supply, it affects our food systems, it affects our health, it affects all of these things that we depend on for a healthy and sustainable life. And so what this means is that we need to dramatically change the course of our trajectory with our economies. We right. need to make sure that Sorry. Right. Sorry, no, 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 go ahead. Yeah. I was just reading something about the report that actually gives a timeline saying that we will breach to 1.5 degrees Celsius as early as 2030s. So may I ask you this, Cassie? Consensus has always been a very big issue when we talk about climate change. Developing nations blame, uh, you know, uh, uh, richer countries. And the First Nations are actually blaming developing nations for what is happening around the world. How do you see countries reach a consensus uh, on such an important issue. This is where the Paris Agreement is really our North Star. Nearly 200 countries agreed in 2015 that we are going to do something about the climate crisis. And as a part of that agreement, every country in the world said they're going to put forward a pledge to reduce their emissions and to increase their resilience to the climate impacts. Now is the era where we have to keep those promises. And something that's really important out of this report is that they've said that we need to invest three to six times the level of current investment in climate action. 
that means we need to invest three to six times in recreating our energy systems and recreating our food systems, mm -hmm. in helping to protect nature, changing the way we have transport around the world. Um, it's these types of solutions that need this scaling up quite quickly. And as a part of this, and, and to your question, this requires global collaboration. Right. Not every country in the world has the finance or the technology to be able to do this. So we have to work collaborative, collaboratively to make sure that we can get it done. All right. Strategic Advisor on Climate Change for the UN Development Program, Cassie Flynn, thank you for joining us. Thank you.